Hey, welcome to Math 7. This is Unit 1, Lesson 7, looking at scale drawings today. And so we're just exploring some scale drawing concepts. And we begin today's lesson by just really asking the question, what is a scale drawing? And it shows some pictures, or some drawings of a school bus, a quarter, and some subway lines around Boston, Massachusetts. And the first two drawings I said are scale drawings of these objects. Then it gave you a set of pictures below that are not scale. And you had a discussion in your class, hopefully, about what the differences were. Uh, and one of the things you might have talked about was that the objects here are not as accurately drawn as what's here. They don't necessarily represent in a, in a real way what the real shape of, would, would be or the real sh uh, item would look like. They're just a little off. They're skewed. They're not quite right. And so there's different ways of talking about those things, but there's a difference between what looks like a scale drawing and what is not scale. There should be some close um, connection between the real object and the real world and the drawing there for it to really be a scale drawing. Then you took some time looking at a basketball court. <laughs> and with the basketball court situation, you were given a court in which you had a scale drawing a basketball court, and you were asked to then label that with the idea being that one centimeter, which is said here on our paper, equals two meters. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick for you just to kind of review it, but just recognize that my picture here might be a different size than what you have in your book just because of how printing works. I'm printing it off the internet and making a, print, a copy on my printer. Yours is a textbook, so it might be a little bit different. So that's okay, just keep that in mind. So first I want to know the length of the court, and our length is right here A, and we're using centimeters. So when I use my ruler, at least what I end up getting is, it says to round up to the nearest centimeter. So I have a little over 13 and a half, so I would probably just go ahead and round that up to 14 and say, let's call it 14 for my length of my court. For the width of my court, I'm gonna go this direction here. We end up with, oh, almost about, looks like about seven and a half. We're a little over seven, so we're getting close to seven and a half there. So I'll put 7.5. From C, hoop to hoop, hoop to hoop, the dotted line and dotted line. I'm looking right about a little bit like 12 and a bit more. Um, I mean, if I look at it closely, I guess I'm really right here at 12.2. And I think that's what my, my book says as well. So we'll go ahead and put 12.2. And the three point line to sideline, that's this little bit right here, that sliver. And my little sliver right there tells me that I'm at about a half, half a centimeter, so maybe 0.5. Now, in terms of our dimensions here, and we did the measuring there, it's, we said that the one centimeter is going to be um, equal to two meters in our scale. That's our scale, one centimeter turns into two meters there, or one to two. So that would mean that on my scale drawing, if my, my drawing was 14 centimeters, then my scale factor is gonna be times two to go from one to two. Don't worry about the values here or the, the labeling part, but numerically I'm going from one to two. So 14 times two becomes a 28, 7.5 times two becomes 15, and these are all gonna be meters. 12.2 becomes 24.4 meters, and 0.5 centimeters becomes one meter. So we're looking at that scale factor again to be able to take a scale drawing and figure out what the actual court would be. So what would it be like in real life? And so they gave you a final question about the basketball court bench being nine meters long. Well, like we said in a previous lesson, if going from a, a drawing to the actual, my scale factor is times two. If I wanted to go the other way, then I use the, what do we say? The reciprocal. And so the reciprocal of two is one over two. So my, my scale factor will be half of that. So I do nine times a half, which ends up being either nine over two, or I could say it's four and a half, or I could say it's 4.5, whichever way you're comfortable with there. And you can measure that in class and do it as well. You then took some time looking at some tall structures and kind of comparing some numbers there about how different heights were. And it gave you a little, little um, chart here to say, all right, well, this is the length of zero to this length is 100 meters and so perhaps you could you could even use a piece of paper here i just take a little piece of paper and i'm going to make a little my own little scale right there so it's the same length right 
there to there, and I can use this now to measure things. So the Willis Tower, I could put this point right here and I could put a little dot and say that's one. I could do another one and say that's two. Do another one and say that's three. Another one and say that's four. Then I have the tower there. And all the way at the top of the tower, we're up to five. And so I've made five of these marks using my little scale drawing here. And so the Willis Tower looks to me to be somewhere about 500 meters tall. Okay. And the Great Pyramid, which is here, if I do my scale drawing here, I can use the middle. There's one. And I go here and I notice I'm about maybe about a half. So because that's 100, then a half would be 150. Okay, and so we were using this to measure some different things. You could compare, it says here, this, this tower with the Eiffel Tower, the Burj uh, Khalifa Tower with the Eiffel Tower, different ways of looking at it. I could use a ruler, right? And I could go straight across and say, well, here's the height, what's left? And I could then compare what's left in this space here. I could measure them both and subtract. It's really up to you, but again, something that you did in class today and you were doing that together. So as a summary of today's lesson, the point here was that scale drawings are two-dimensional representations of actual objects or places. So they represent real things is the idea. And when we do that, the lengths on our drawings are either enlarged, made bigger, or reduced by the same scale factor. So we're doing the lengths and scale factor. And so that's what's happening here in this lesson today. So let's take a look at your homework. You begin with some scale drawings of a Royal Air Force um, plane from the 1930s. Okay, and so we had down here a little scale factor. So I'm going to use my paper again, and this is 10 feet to go from here to the edge is 10 feet. So I know that little chunk of paper is 10 feet. Okay, there's my little my little measuring stick there. So when it says, what's the wingspan of the plane? Well, I'm going to take my wingspan here and say, well, let's just see. That's 10 feet. Measure another one. That's 20 feet. Measure another one. I've got 30 feet. Get close to the end here. I have 40 feet. And I get here and I go, hmm, not quite, but it goes to about there. Well, so I would say, you can just eyeballing, estimate it. Half is about here. So I'm definitely going 10, 20, 30, 40 and I'm probably 45 and a little bit more. So maybe you would say somewhere between 46 or 47 feet, somewhere in that range. Again, you're just estimating it's an approximate length because we're just using a piece of paper there to figure that out. For the height of the plane, the same idea. I could use any one of these, these shapes here. It depends on what you want to measure. I could measure from here to here, up and down. That might be a good one to do. So it's just wheel to top. So if I take the bottom of the wheel, and I go there, and I got that, that's 10 feet, and I'm gonna go a little bit more. How much is that gonna be? I don't know, maybe maybe about 12, something like that. So let's just go about 12 feet, just approximating what it could be. When it comes to the length, it says the length of the, of the plane to the nearest meter. The length, again, is gonna be how long it is this direction, or I could go this way. And because we want meters, I'm gonna get a new measuring tool. So I'll use the meter one, this is seven meters. And so I'll put a little mark here and know that that whole span is seven meters. So I could take it from the tip of the, the nose of the plane there and go seven to there. And I still have this bit here, which is gonna go all the way to there. So I have to decide how much is that gonna be? Well, half is probably about here. So if I did seven plus a half is 3.5, so 10.5. I'm a little less than that, so maybe this is going to be going down maybe two and a half, something like that. Again, just getting an approximate idea here of what that could be. I don't have an actual number, so maybe I would say somewhere between, we, we want to round to the nearest meter anyways, so probably nine meters is probably a good estimate there for that one. It's seven and a few more, right? So that's what we're going to say there, something like that. Number two. A blueprint for a building includes a rectangular room that measures three inches by 5.5. .5. So it looks like this, three and 5.5. .5. The scale for the blueprint says that one inch is equivalent to 10 feet. 
So we're going from 1 to a 10, so a scale factor of times 10. What are the dimensions of this rectangular room in the actual building? So we're going to use our scale factor and multiply these values by 10 each time. So 3 times 10 would be 3 times 10 would be 30 and then 5.5 .5 times 10 would be 55. So my actual dimensions for this would be a 30 by 55 um, size building, 30 feet long, 55 feet wide building. On the next page, we have a map of Lafayette Square, which is near the White House in Washington, D.C. And again, this is another drawing where my shape, my drawing might be a little bit larger or smaller than your book because, again, it's a photocopy. It says that this is the scale, and I want to find the actual side lengths of Lafayette Square in feet. So when I look at mine, I'm going to go ahead and just draw my little, my, my sample thing here. So I have a mark there. We have 100. Here's a mark and a mark and a mark. So I'm telling me, it's telling me here this is 100, here's 150, here's 200, and here's 50. So I have a little scale there. So to find this, the length of this park here, um, so the sides, I'll start, I'm going to go right here. I think this is more like the corner there, and that's the corner there, and corner there, and corner there. So I would start here and say, well, that's 200 and come to the edge of my paper and say that's 400 edge of the paper and say that's 600 edge of my paper here and I have 600 I can go out another 700 and then almost another 50 so maybe about 750 or so again this is my drawing so I'm not sure what yours is going to be yours to be a little different I might say 750 feet and to go to the length I might start here again and say well I have 200 there, I pull it down here and I have another 200, so I'm at 400 plus a little bit more, another 50, so maybe 450 feet. That could be what, what you have there. That's just a possible solution, again, depends on how you measure those things, somewhere in that range. It says use an inch ruler to measure the line segment of the graphic scale, about how many feet does one inch represent. So there's my graphic scale. And when I put my ruler down there on mine, one inch actually lines up pretty well right there. So I would say one inch is going to be the equivalent of 200 feet. Again, that's what mine looks like there. Yours could be different based upon what your ruler, what your picture looks like compared to your ruler size. Finally, number four, we have a triangle that. Uh, triangle A that Lynn created a scale copy triangle A with an area of 72 square units. So they took this and they made a scale copy with 72 square units. So we went from here to there. So we made it a lot bigger because this is not 72, this is a lot smaller. So something happened from the little one to the big one. We went up. Scale factors bigger than one, look greater than one. How many times larger is the area of the scaled copy compared to that of, the tri of triangle A? Well, let's find the area of triangle A. The area of triangle A is area equals one half the base times the height. That's our formula for the area of a triangle. So our base happens to be one, two, three, and our height is also I'm going to make a straight right right angle here, right angle. So our height is one, two, three as well. So our area is half times three times three. Three times three is nine, and then half of that is either 9 over 2, we could say it's 4.5, or you could say it's 4.5. Those are all three different ways of saying what the area of the triangle is. So our triangle is going from being 4.5 times some scale factor to get up to 72. And that's what's happening there, right? So we're, we're, we're increasing things quite a bit. So, or really we should say for us, because we know that one, we're doing 72 divided by, well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to put the 4.5 on the other side by dividing both sides by 4.5. That works there. And so when I do that, I end up with a number I'll show you in a second. The advantage to using fractions is if I had 9 over 2 times my scale factor equals 72, and I multiply by the reciprocal, so 2 over 9, now I can have some nice canceling action, right? because I know that one, 9 times 8 is 72, 
and I have 8 times 2 is 16. So my answer here happens to be 16, right? So I know that it's going to be 16 times larger compared to the original. That's the first part there. Now, that's not the scale factor. That's just going to be the, the, the area is 16 times larger. Now, the reason for that is, remember, I should have done this before. I apologize. Our, our, when we're doing area, the area is the original area times scale, fa scale factor squared. I should have put that in there before, and I apologize for that. It should be scale factored squared. So this is really my scale factored squared is 16. That's how much larger my area is. The actual scale factor is asking what two numbers multiply together to get 16. So 16 can be broken up into 4 times 4. And so my scale factor is actually just going to be 4. And sorry about that before. I should have put that in there in my notes. It's the second time I've done that. And what is the length of the bottom side of the scaled copy? Okay, the scale copy is increasing. So my initial was one, two, three. So because I had three, I multiplied by a scale factor of four, and we would say it's going to be 12. So 12 for C. So we have 16 times for A, four for the scale factor, and 12 for the length for C. All right, hope that helps you out with your homework, and you have a great day. See ya.